What is up YouTube? Thanks for coming back for another video. So if you remember in the last one, I believe I'm still editing as I'm recording this one. So might be a couple of videos coming out about the same time. But the previous video to this one, I had major issues with my weed eater. I talked to a guy who was mowing the neighbor's yard across the street and I think the rest is history. So let's get to it. All right, so to give you a rundown of what was going on, I have this Troy built. This is a TB635EC. This is not my first, but my second uh, Troy built weed eater. The first one actually died on me less than a year after ownership. Uh, warranty did cover it. Now, before I start bashing on Troy built, I will give props to the customer support. Uh, going through the warranty process to have the first one taken care of was kind of an interesting one. Um, not from the fact that I had to jump through a bunch of hoops, but the fact that Troy Bilt actually backed me up and kind of got mad at Lowe's for how they treated the, uh, the warranty uh, replacement. So what happened was a couple years ago, I was using this Troy Bilt and not, again not this one in particular this is the second one but i was using the leaf blower attachment uh to blow some leaves on the side yard while the uh the wife and the kids were raking i was kind of blowing everything in a pile for them the motor just decided to seize up um i held on to it for a while because it was you know fall time i wasn't going to use it anymore anyway so come springtime i got a hold of uh lowe's where i got it from and they said oh you have to go through troy built to get the replacement even though it's under warranty okay even though i have my receipt and it's under factory warranty i sh should have just been able to bring it in right well so i called troy built and got a hold of a, a human being so that there's a big plus right there is that you can actually get through to actual people there um talk to a, a lady I told her what was going on the motor seized up i called lowe's already and they told me to call them and she pretty much said eh, they're freaking stupid that they shouldn't be doing that um and this is pretty on par of what she was actually saying she said they're freaking stupid and all they had to do is have a manager come in there you know as long as I had the receipt and it's been within the warranty period just hand them the receipt they'll go back on the shelf pull another one down swap it out off i go um so she's like go back down there and I'll, here's an instant number. She gave me a number and she's like, if they give you any issues with it, have them call me direct. They gave me her direct number and a, a ticket number to reference. And so said, if they give you any issues, you have them call me. All right. I, I, I got mad respect for, uh, for that lady. Um, so I did take it down there, told them what was going on and they did replace it. And then they apologized for being, you know, a pain in the butt. Um, so fast forward another two years, this one will no longer start. Um, I never use the pull string on it. So the cool thing about the Troy Bilt is they had this little device here. It's called the jump start. And basically you just plug this into the back of the motor like so and pull the trigger and it'll start up for you to keep from throwing your shoulder out of socket. Um, so I never used a string on this, um, but I started having issues where this particular weed eater, who it's hot out, uh, would not start. Um, either using the jump start in and then I did finally try using the uh, pull string on it. The pull string wouldn't even really get a hold of the, the motor to try to turn it over. It's just a string just pulling, so it's not even grabbing anything. And I've never even used a string before. So there's a huge issue right there. But this motor will no longer start. Um, no matter what I did, I kind of looked at everything. You had a plug, the, the air filter sponge on it. This thing is just done already. So second one to three years. So I'm tired of screwing around with it. I'm tired of replacing them. I shouldn't have to do that every couple years. If you buy a weed eater, it should last you, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever. But apparently this, this lower end Lowe's consumer grade garbage just doesn't do it. Now, my problem with replacing this Troy Built is I am fairly invested into their Trimmer Plus line. So this is part of the Trimmer Plus. Um, basically it is just a, a kind of a modular system so you can swap out the, the power head for the different attachments. So I've used the, the uh, weed eater, the edger, the blower. I have a, a hedge trimmer, um, a 
a uh, tiller. So I pretty much have the almost the full line, except like a pole saw, which I don't really need. Um, so I had the full line, so I'm pretty well vested into it, but I'm tired of dealing with this Troy build issue. So in came the still, this is the Kumi system. This has been around for a while, NXT is kind of the same deal. It's a modular system where you can get the different parts and, uh, and throw on there. So you just have one power head. You don't have to worry about buying multiple uh, power heads to support your, your weed eater, your edge, or your blower. Um, so it makes it a little bit cheaper in the long run and less maintenance as far as, you know, less motors to uh, maintain. So I did not buy any attachments for this still. Uh, reason being is I purchased uh, Justice Powerhead after doing some research and for what I hear there's a rumor whew, that the Troy built attachments will work with the steel Comey system. Um, I think I found a launch site and maybe a couple others that uh, said that it was a rumor and then some other people actually tried it and it worked. So I have not bolted this up yet. I'm going to find out firsthand will this actually work. And I'm thinking yes, based on research, but let's give it a try and see what we got. All right, so one of the first differences I see, looking down in here, I don't know if I'll be able to get enough light in there to see down into the uh, the drive shaft there, but you have a couple little metal clips there, which the Troy belt does not have. But looking further, I do see kind of a square cutout in that drive shaft. Comparing that to the Troy built, you still have kind of the square inside the drive shaft, but there's no metal clips there. I don't exactly know what that is for. But comparing that to one of your attachments, you have a square shaft there, giggity. And so this should, in theory, go right in. So let me try to slide it in, giggity, and see if this will work. One thing I do notice, so I had this push button, that would be a release to kind of hold the uh, attachment in place on the Troy built. This does not have it. So we will just have to see how that part plays out. So I'll have to rely on this actually holding it down. Holding in place is not spinning around on me. So, we'll give this a shot. So, all right. And so far, this has been first pull every time. So, let's see if I can get first pull again or not. So that would be what you call a pisser offer. I'm not getting any action out of the uh, the weed eater here. So that's telling me that this is not going to work. I don't like it. That sucks severely. Because I have a lot of money into those attachments and it's appearing they're not going to work. Dang it. All right, so I just reseated it and uh, got, just fired it up. <laughs> yeah, so maybe it will work. So maybe I just didn't have it seated in there correctly and I didn't have it set to where it, the, uh, the drive shaft was grabbing it. So uh, let's take it for a spin and see how it's gonna work.
crap. This thing's freaking awesome. Ever. In all my excitement, I forgot one thing. Let me get that. So this thing definitely has a lot more power than what that Troy belt ever had. That uh, whipped through there pretty quick. I'm definitely no expert in weed eating. But that actually wasn't too bad. That's kind of clean. There's a couple of blades of grass that was laying down that it missed, but not bad, not bad, not bad. So now that the weed eater works, let's see what the, the uh, edger and the blower will do. Can it edge? Yes, it do. Pretty center, pretty good too. I could hit the uh, the driveway here. I haven't had a chance to do this in a while. Do the weed eater Detroit boat being dead. I'll hit that later though, because I've got my car on the way. So let's try giving a uh, a blow down and uh, see what uh, the blower will do on it. So, my first impression of this thing is, it's pretty freaking awesome. I'm happy with the uh, the purchase. The wife, on the other hand, I, I might be sleeping in the doghouse for a little bit. She wasn't uh, happy when I told her I spent 330 bucks on uh, this uh, weed eater. Plus, I bought the uh, little bit of oil. So, let's talk about that real quick. Since I did talk a couple minutes about the Detroit Bill, let's talk about this uh, the steel. So my Troy Bill was a true four cycle uh, weed eater. I just had a thing against you know doing the whole thing of mixing oil with the gas and all that junk and uh, getting on measuring cups. Make sure you have precise amounts so you get that. Uh, I know the steel is like a 50 to one mixture, um, so I didn't want to do it. So I made sure I had a four cycle uh, weed eater. Maybe that was a mistake, I don't know. Um, now, the steel, and this one in particular, so this <coughs> this model is a KM91R. This one, it is, um, I can't remember how many cc's, but it's like 1.27 horsepower, I believe it was. Um, there is another one up from it, of the Comey line, I believe it was like a 131R. That one has almost two horsepower. But I fear for what I'm doing, even though this is a, a, a professional line of um, lawn tools, I'm not a professional. I'm not doing you know multiple yards a day. I'm just doing my 
15,000 square foot, you know, 0.43 or 0.44 acre. Um, so the, the 91R is going to be plenty for me. Now this is, like I said, uh, was mentioning, this is a, it, this, I'm trying to think how to word this, this is not a two stroke, a four stroke. They call this, I believe, a four mix. So what that means is it, has like the the power and the torque of a four stroke but it's not and it's something to do with their um just with their their you know fuel efficiency and blah 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 all the all the epa regulations or whatever so the two stroke and the four stroke with these are, are pretty much gone now they have this what they call four mix um so with that i do have to mix the gas with oil um and I was, I was a little worried about that. But, so you can get either two ways to do it. You can get a canister of the pre-mixed fuel. I don't know how much it is. Or you can go with something like this. Buy a pack of this. This is your oil. And this is a oil where it's already ready to go for you. All you have to do is add it to, it makes one gallon. So you get one gallon of gas, dump one bottle of this in there and you're set. So you don't have to really do any uh, specific measuring or anything. And they have these in multiple things at the, at the steel dealer. They had a one gallon, they have a two gallon. So if you have a bigger gas can where you can hold two gallons of gas then you can get a bigger uh, bottle of the oil. So I do have, it's maybe a one and a half gallon or so uh, gas can back there. So I will probably just do a one gallon and then throw one of those in there. So I haven't really even gone through this bag. There's still the, warranty info and blah 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 so this whole pack of stuff in here i'm trying to get with my hand so there's all this stuff i haven't even read through this yet i don't even know what that tool's for that might be it, it looks like for a spark plug and tightening and there's a hex screw on the end yeah so it looks like a little bit of general maintenance on the uh, on the power head there so I guess there you have it. The KM91R modular uh, attachment. Man, it's so hot out. Uh, works with the uh, Detroit built. So there, there was questions whether or not it did. Some people said that it does work. Now first thing you're seeing that it does work. I use the, the weed eater attachment. I use the edger attachment. I use the blower attachment. I do have a um, hedge trimmer. Um, actually, while I was doing some of this, the wife came out and asked me to um, hit up some of the uh, bushes that are over here. They're starting to get a little overgrown. So I can make her happy now that I bought this and hit those um, bushes and get those trimmed down. So maybe she won't be as mad at me. Probably will be. But so I can get that done. Now, with that said, I do want to give an update on X Green. As you recall, the last video, I hit the front yard with the X Green. Right through here, ignore all the nuts edge. There's a lot of it. I'm going to have to get a bunch of sedge hammer, like a bottle of it, to do a, a blanket spray. But anyway, looking at the yard, this is perked up a lot. Now there still is some brown spots through here where some of it is dormant. Um, still a little bit of the uh, stems from uh, certain things where it, where it went to seed and some fine fescue out in the yard where I killed it with fusillade. Um, other than that though, this has definitely perked up a lot. Now when I applied this, I was going for a quarter pound of nitrogen per thousand. That would have given me enough to cover my whole yard um, at a quarter pound with the X screen. When I was putting it down, it comes out very fine and pretty fast. I couldn't exactly see how much was coming out until it was pretty much too late. Um, so at that point, I already had most of the yard applied and, um, and ended up using the whole 50 pounds on my 8,000 square foot, which put me at just under um, a half pound. I think the exact math would have been like 0.46 pounds or something, whatever. I put down a half pound. Now, I'm not too terribly mad about that because I didn't overdo the nitrogen. 
but what does make me upset about it though is that means I didn't have enough to do the rest of the yard because I only bought one bag to do my whole yard. So my side yard over here and my backyard got no love. Um, the backyard, I had just enough left that I did a trim pass around my fence with the uh, the X screen, but that was all the uh, backyard got just because I had a tiny bit left. So comparing, here's my side yard, no X screen. You can see a little bit more browning through here with some of that, especially out closer toward this tree there's a bigger area where I blanket sprayed fusillade so it killed a little bit of the a uh, little bit more of the fine fescue off um other than after here though none of the fusillade was sprayed there's a little bit more stressing through here and this was a newer grass that was in this is the uh, uh so this section would have been a scott's uh, tall fescue mix um so that's stressing a little bit some other spots out here stressing and even looking at an area here so we've got a bunch of nimble wool that keeps coming back a couple uh, some dallas grass in here i've got to get some more fusillade out when it cools down this area right here was actually the uh, gci and you see a couple other spots it's a little bit darker green is the uh, gci that seems to be holding up okay this spot here is actually gci that's actually starting to check out um, and this is after we got some uh, some rain. We got quite a bit after I applied the X screen. So we've got maybe an inch and a half of rain in the past week and a half or so. So that that definitely woke up some of the other grass that was stressing, but it watered in the X screen really good, and it did make things pop up quite a bit. And one area I kind of watch is behind this tree here, this section. This tends to grow a little bit more because I have more of that shade from that tree. And there's a tree on the other side there. So I kind of get a little bit more shade in this area. So I get a little bit more growth out of this as compared to more my, my middle of the yard through here. I will see this kind of have a little bit more issues. But overall though, the yard has kind of perked back up. And um, so it's, Still mid-August, looks like the 17th. Um, so about three more weeks, uh, depending on weather, I will be getting ready to do my uh, yearly overseeding. Um, I have done the chemical aeration once already in the front. I've done it a few times in the back to try to loosen up that soil. Um, but I still might go across the, the front yard with a mechanical aeration just because I own one, so it's not costing me anything. So I might as well, um, but I'll go across with the uh, mechanical aeration, do some more overseeding. I will probably go across again with more of the GCI tall fescue and try to water this in really good. Uh, especially the areas where the fusillade has kind of killed a lot of the uh, sections where I sprayed the um, fusillade and killed the fine fescue. Uh, so I'll have to make sure I kind of go over that really good, especially kind of again along the, the tree line over here it was a uh, blanket sprayed and killed a lot of it so i'll have to make sure that i get ooh, um that i get the uh seed in there and get everything growing back to fill that that dead area in but other than that um that's pretty much it for this week i'm not going to mow right now because i've just got too much going on right now i did want to play with the weed eater make sure everything was going to work want to give an update on that um I can't, I can't help how happy I am with this thing. Um, I love it. But so that that is all I really have for this week. I wanted to show the weed eater. I want to give you an update on the X screen. Uh, I said it, I'd give it a week. It's been about a week. So that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know that you know the the 20 of you that actually watch my videos are digging it. Let me know, and I'll.